Since 1924, the Prince George's Cha Chamber has been an advocate for business and uh, development in this county. I believe that it is important for a government to have a strong partnership with the business community. I'm committed to working with the Chamber and other business organizations to help expand commercial business uh, in Prince George's County and provide jobs to our residents. These are critical and challenging times that we live in. But behind the critical and challenging times are opportunities. The opportunities that we must take advantage of that are right here in Prince George's County, the assets that we have to make us the economic engine of the state. We must think differently if we are to do this. We must let innovation be our guide to our thinking. We must have a sense of urgency so that we become even more competitive in the Washington region and throughout the state. We have to bring new industries into the county that will help our small businesses grow and expand. We must reduce our dependency on residential property taxes. Today, approximately 70 percent, 70 percent of the county's revenues come from residential property taxes. If you compare us to our neighboring jurisdiction, 65% of their revenue comes from commercial taxes. We must change that dynamic. The collapse of the housing market has shown us that relying on residential property taxes will put us where we are. Last year, we had to close a $77 million budget deficit. This year, when I proposed a budget to the council, we had to close a $126 million budget deficit. Our dependency on residential property taxes is hurting us. It is why we face these large deficits. It is for this reason and others that I have tirelessly worked to implement programs and policies that are innovative and will better position us to take advantage of our opportunities that are unique to Prince George's County. Just imagine, if you're the other county executives and I'm sitting in a room with them, with them and the mayor, and I say to them, I have 15 underdeveloped metro stations. I have acres of land. I have a highly educated workforce and a diverse population. I have major highways and roads and trains that run from Baltimore to Washington, D.C. What other jurisdiction has the I-95 corridor, the 495 corridor, the Baltimore-Washington Parkway, and Amtrak that carries millions of people north and south every day? We are perfectly positioned to take advantage of the economic opportunity that we have. No other region can touch us. But that can only happen if we do a few things right. In order to reach our goal, we must be bold, innovative, and take aggressive steps to move us forward. This is one of the reasons that I was happy to submit to the council, and I was glad that they passed. And I'm thrilled that she's working on this, Gwen McCall, and that is our 50 million economic development fund. No other place in the region has a fund that large where we will. <laughs> where we will begin to have an economic advantage. We must take aggressive steps like we did in signing an MOU with the state, dimensions, and UMS to build a $6 million regional health care facility that will provide not only health care, but jobs and opportunities right here in Prince George's County. We must continue to make bold steps, like requiring or asking very nicely that the state bring one of its agencies to the second largest jurisdiction in the state, and that's Prince George's County, and we're pleased that we're going to have the Department of Housing and Community Development right here in New Carrollton. That is a win for us.
we must do innovative things like what we're doing with our Transforming Neighborhood Initiative, where we are coordinating across government and transforming and uplifting our neighborhoods that are grappling with challenges such as education, economic opportunity, health care, and crime, where we're bringing all the forces of our government to bear on those six areas that have the highest indicators that we need to change. And we're doing this with the leadership of our CAO, Brad Seaman. That is going to change the way Prince George's County looks in the world. We must continue to make bold steps and reach across the ocean and partner with other nations to bring those businesses to Prince George's County. It is why I was pleased to go with the Economic Development Corporation to India, where we were able to bring companies from, a, from Prince George's County and businesses in India to, do, to come and do business right here in Prince George's County, leading the way we had the most deals signed of any of the jurisdictions that went from the state of Maryland. We must continue to make aggressive, aggressive steps in public safety. That is why I'm pleased that our, the hard work of our public safety agencies has brought crime down in Prince George's County to a 37-year low. 37-year low. And yes, we must make aggressive improvements in several key areas. One that I am sure is of great importance to those who do development or just try to redo their house in Prince George's County, and that is permitting. <laughs> Did I hit a chord? We must identify ways to make this process smoother and more efficient. Believe me, believe me, believe me, we heard you and we hear you loud and clear. That is why we're working aggressively to unravel the cumbersome process. And I am committed to improving this and creating a business friendly regulatory environment that you can be proud of and that this county can be proud of. I recognize that businesses need two things, predictability and certainty, and they are critical to keeping your business alive. So we're going to make it happen. I promise you that today. Yes, we have taken some bold, innovative, and aggressive steps to move this county forward. But we cannot wait. We cannot tire. We cannot lose focus because there is much at stake. The economic well-being of our county is in our hands. We must hold close and protect it and nurture it like we do our children. In 1961, John F. Kennedy delivered a speech to the National Industrial Conference Board, and he, he titled that speech, The Road to Recovery. And it's interesting, in that speech, he stressed the importance of a strong collaboration between business and government. Kennedy believed that economic recovery was grounded in initiatives, innovation, hard work, and cooperation between business and government. But the thing that he identified as a key component of economic recovery and growth was education. Kennedy said, and I quote, but modernization and productivity depends upon more than investment in physical resources. Equally essential is investment in human resources. And I think that it's obvious to those of us who have considered the problems of unemployment in depressed areas that there is no doubt that the maximum impact of a reducing economy falls upon those at the bottom of the educational ladder. The first people unemployed are those with the least education. The last people to be hired back are those with the least education. And so there is a direct connection between an increased emphasis on education in this country 
and increasing productivity and technological changes. 51 years ago, he said that. I believe Kennedy had it right. I believe the key component to our economic recovery equation is education. That we must focus on education like a laser to improve our education system. For without a strong school system and a well-educated work and trained workforce, it will be difficult to attract businesses or to keep businesses here in Prince George's County. It will be hard to stop them from leaving. Without a strong school system, families will, will think twice about staying or moving to Prince George's County. Without a strong school system, the number of future business leaders and award winners will be reduced. Without a strong school system, our march toward becoming the economic engine will be more difficult. So Kennedy, as Kennedy said, modernization and productivity depend upon more than investment in physical resources. Equally es essential, essential is investment in human resources, our children. That is why when we submitted the budget to the council, we did not make any cuts, even in these hard economic times in education. In fact, we increased the education budget by $21 million. <laughs> because we understand investment in human resources. Our children are important. And we must have a sense of urgency about moving our schools forward rapidly. And we must aggressively push for school innovation. Our principals, our teachers, our students, our parents, our community leaders, our nonprofits, our faith community, and yes, our business community all must understand that education is everyone's business. The economic future of this county is directly connected to this notion, and we have to accelerate our march toward excellence. We all want this county to have one of the top school systems. I know I certainly do. But we must move from wants and wishes to engagement and action. Now, I know that uh, Many of you are probably wondering why I'm talking about education in a uh, chamber meeting and a business meeting. And if you're not wondering it to yourself, you're probably whispering to your neighbors, why is he doing that? And I want to tell you, if you haven't already guessed, because I believe education is everyone's business. I believe it is your business when you're selling real estate and your clients ask, how are the schools in that neighborhood? I believe it is your business. When you're trying to hire employees and they don't have the training or skills you need when you're expanding your business. Yes, I believe it is your business. When you want to move your headquarters or relocate an office here in Prince George's County, and the employees in the existing office ask, how are the schools in Prince George's County? Yes, education is everybody's business. And today, all of us must realize that if we are going to move this county forward, we have to all be in, bet it all. We have to make our schools a top priority that is why I stand here today and tell you that I'm going to go beyond the normal role of county executive in just funding education. That I'm going to be more engaged than ever in our education system. That I'm going to push the envelope and seek innovations for our children. I am on a mission to promote innovation in our schools and to make us the leader in this region in education. So 
So we're going to step up our involvement, be more aggressive, take action to move improvement faster. We don't want it 40 years from now, but we want it immediately. We're going to move. We're going to push. That is why earlier this year, I announced the appointment of an education policy advisor, Christian Rose, who is here with us today. Christian, if you can stand up. It is also why I tapped a very talented and gifted deputy CAO to put this education initiative under, Betty Hager Francis, if you could stand up. <laughs> to seek out innovations and partnership with businesses and nonprofits supporting our schools, to promote the good things that principals and teachers and students are doing in our high schools every day. The good things like the partnership that we have with Capital One and Parkdale High School, where our young people are learning to be branch managers and tellers and bankers and getting a valuable experience in uh, financial literacy. I want to thank Capital One and let's clap for them for doing a great job. As a lot of folks know, I uh, visit a school a week, and sometimes I visit a school twice, twice a week. I haven't figured that one out. And uh, I managed to avoid my child's school, who's just graduated, so she's happy. But as I was visiting Parkdale, I got a chance to see these young people in action and to operate, and I was just really, really uh, thrilled with the work that they're doing. I remain committed throughout my administration that once a week, or sometimes twice a week, I will be walking into our schools. I will be talking to our principals. I will be talking to our teachers. I will be talking to our students about what is working and more importantly, what is not working. Because it is programs like the one with Capital One that are innovative and the partnerships with Parkdale that are the changes we need in our school system. I'm looking for a new approach to the, on how we prepare our children for the future. People and organizations that push the envelope and strive for innovation have made the world a better place. There are innovative people and ideas in our schools and we need to support them. There are teachers who are doing innovative and great things in our schools and principals and we need them to help, we need your help so that they can develop these great ideas and challenge our students. Ideas that will enhance teaching and learning in our classrooms and help our children be better prepared. I am confident, I am confident that the business community will follow suit and partner with me and the school system by investing in the future, our children. I'd like to thank one of those partners tonight, and that is Wegmans. They do a great job in providing groceries and food, but they also are lead sponsor of the Hillside Work Scholarship Connection. This program currently is working in three of our high schools and two of our middle schools. They are preparing students for life, with life skills during and after school. This year, the Hillside helped graduate 50 of its 52 students that participated in the program. 50 of 52 students that participated in this program graduated. That is a 96% graduation rate. Back when I was in school, that would have been a high A, which my wife got all the high A's, um, and I tell my children I did. But I want, to <laughs> I want to thank them for the work they're doing, and we need more partners like them. We need technology which drives the world and our economy. We need help to prepare our children for the future ahead of them. We need employees who can use technology and find new ways for businesses to be successful, and we need you to help train those students to do this. This is why I think we should push something else that we're going to push very hard in this administration, and that is to build a robust science, technology, and engineering and math program, or STEM. 
STEM jobs are on the rise, and we must prepare our children for STEM jobs. I want us to be known in Prince George's County as the leader in the state in STEM education. We will do this by establishing a partnership with business entities that understand the importance of developing the next generation of professionals in STEM. Our proximity to the District of Columbia and the government, and the fact that we have Joint Base Andrews and NASA right here in Prince George's County, makes this the natural place for STEM to grow in the state of Maryland. We are going to be the leader in developing the future engineers, scientists, and technologists in this region. And we're going to do it better than any other county. One of the people, thank you. One of the businesses that's working with us right now is Cisco. It's currently running an academy that helps train and teach and prepare students in information technology and networking at Suitland High School, um, one of my favorite high schools, because all of my children went there. They're doing a great job. These children will come out of high school prepared to go walk right into jobs or go into a four-year institution. But we just can't focus on STEM alone. We must bring together all disciplines of study to ensure that our children are well-rounded and have exposures to the arts and humanities. Our system should produce men and women who appreciate and understand the world around them. It's art, it's beauty, it's possibilities. Imagine our school with classrooms that have huge screens with Skype-like technology and tablets that students and teachers are using to communicate with their colleagues around the county or around the state or around the world in subjects like music, history, science, and world language. These are the types of experience I want our children to have that they should have and they deserve. And we will aggressively pursue partnerships with businesses that are interested in investing in our young people. Prince George's County is blessed with great, a great amount of smart people. People who spend their days solving difficult problems at local, state, and national level in government. Solving problems in large corporations and businesses and organizations. People who think outside the box and use innovative techniques to tackle difficult issues. We need those great minds. We need your great minds to bring your resources to the county. Resources that will move us forward and make our school system the best in the state. Like you, I've always believed that this could happen. If I didn't believe it, I wouldn't have put my children in our public school system. I also believe, and I firmly believe, that the Board of Education, that Dr. Height and his team are working hard to move our system forward. However, they need our help. They need your help. They need businesses to become engaged in our schools. They need you to provide internships, come into our schools for career day, adopt a school, bring financial and other resources to our school system so that our children are exposed to colleges and are exposed to businesses that they may not be exposed to otherwise. They need, we need you to support the plays that are going on in our schools and the concerts and especially the art shows. And if they happen to be at Suitland, definitely go to those. The poetry reading and other things. But we need you to engage yourselves in our schools. We need technology and resources partners for the real world tools experience that our kids need in the classroom. Our children can do it, but so many need your insight, counsel, and learn to learn about industries they may not have been exposed to. The success of this county is closely linked to the quality of our education system. It is our calling card, as I say a lot. I am confident that we can do bold and innovative things together. Our economy is moving in the right direction. We have planted the seeds for success. 
We must continue to water and fertilize them so that they grow and blossom. So that they will become, so that we will become the economic engine of this region. But in order to do that, in order to make it happen, we must make education everybody's business. It will help our real estate market. It will help improve unemployment. It will help attract new businesses. It will help anchor our economy and improve, improve the quality of life for our residents. Yes, education is everybody's business. That is why, in a few weeks, I will be announcing my plan to work with Dr. Height and the Board of Education to aggressively move Prince George's County from where we are up the ladder in this state and make us the greatest school system you can imagine. So tonight, I'm asking all of you on this rainy night to make a commitment to get involved in our public school system because I am confident that together we can become the fastest improving school system in the state, that this is not just wishful thinking, but this is something we can and will and must do for Prince George's County. Thank you.